Hello tacticians, it's Nox here and today I'm going to be going through everything that I can to do with the faction tournament arena. But before I go into all of that, I just want to say my usual thank yous and today they go to Smyrny, Endraiser, Colo Polo, Cygnus Prime and Jason Z13. That's how we say it in England. All of you have used my friend code and it is very much appreciated as it really does help me out. So thank you once again. And now let's have a look at these factions. The first thing to note is these, at the moment, are not configurable. They are set teams, and if you're missing any of the characters, they will be loaned to you, but at a common rarity. And as such, if you're playing at the epic level, bear in mind you're taking in common characters and you're going to be at a massive disadvantage. So bear that in mind before you choose which rarity you play at. If you're borrowing anything, go to common. If you've got all the characters and they're leveled up, by all means, go in at epic. On top of that, you get additional points based on if you own all the characters, in which case you get plus two. And if you don't and you only have three characters, you only get plus one point per battle. So again, another incentive to make sure you have all the characters unlocked and leveled up to be able to use in the tournament arena. Factions with less than five eligible characters have been assigned substitute reinforcements from other factions, and we'll get into that in a little bit. There is also another note here, and that's the fact that Blood Angels, Tyranids, and Gene Stealer Cults are not available to be used in this tournament arena. Now, as they get their fifth character, I'm guessing that will change, but for now, this is all we've got, and they will be improving upon the faction choices, I hope. So let's start with the Ultramarines. You'd think because they have six characters, you'll be able to choose which one to use, but no, you are forced to use these five. Incisus is off with the Dark Angels. And as a team, it's not terrible. With Marnius Kalgar, you can take care of many summons. Titus can actually do the same thing if you pivot around one character and manage to surround him with others, or he's got a decent attack if you charge into someone. One important thing to note, and I think something that many people will forget, is Certus's Mortis round shot. This will push someone one hex directly away, and this is actually very important because of the healers which may appear. Using Certus to push those healers away means you'll be able to kill whichever character that you want just make sure you do it quick because you've only got that one chance to do it. The Black Templars. Now, I reckon these are going to be the dark horse of the game. Don't underestimate them. I reckon these guys are going to take many people by surprise. They've got access to stun. They've got taunt. Helbrecht is actually a buffer, so he can increase the damage of or everyone else in the team in melee combat only. But I've got a funny feeling this team is going to cause many many upsets. The Dark Angels, oh dear, uh, how I wish they gave them Matenio instead. The Plasma would have been perfect here to work with the rest of the team, but no, they get inside us. I want to like the Dark Angels. I really do, and I hope I'm wrong, but I don't think this team is there yet. The Space Wolves, they've got Ragnar. You're going to have that one turn to do your Alpha Strike. You're going to rush in and you're going to beat the snot out of someone. You're not worried about summons because of Ulf. You're not worried about psychers because of Shark. You've got that one big hit from Arjak and then you've got Njal being the cheerleader on the side. Could be a good team. I just don't think they're going to win enough games to be worth it. The Adeptus Mechanicus. Now, these guys are going to be one of the Alpha Strike teams. You need to set this up so that when you go in with extra row, you murder everyone you can. If you lose extra row, you've lost. So if you're taking those in, good luck. Morven Val being included here is a nice touch as she is not terrible and has got decent AoE attacks, which will trigger extra row in very bizarre ways. The Adeptus Sororitas. I want to say these guys are going to be good, and I think you'll pick up a few points. I don't think you're going to win every single match. Vindicta is great because of that massive flaming attack, which can really shut down the enemy movement. Celestine can snipe off another character, but without that buff from Ragnar, she may not actually kill who you're expecting her to kill. I certainly wouldn't be recommending to take these into the Taunt Arena. The Astra Militarum is an interesting one. They're really a team with all your summons. You're going to bog down the enemy with as many as you can. Now, bear in mind, this is a power-up one and not one where we can take in our Machines of War. With Machines of War, these will get a lot better. 
With the power-ups, I don't think they're going to do it. Sybil will certainly kill any character she chooses, but otherwise, hmm, I think you're going to be struggling. For the Black Legion, let's start off with the bad. You've got a badden. He is a cheerleader for the team. He will make them hit an additional time if that procs. Beyond that, he's not going to do any damage. You need time to ramp up Harkon. Volk isn't really that great, which leaves you with Angrax and Archimatos. Again, it's not going to be enough to really make a dent. Death card. Possibly one of the top teams. However, they are going to be let down with the fact that this is a power-up faction war. The enemy is going to get their power-ups first, and you may not get as many power-ups for your characters as the enemy will for theirs. Is that enough to turn the tide against them? Time will tell, but they are going to be a tough cookie to crack because of Nauseous Rotbone resurrecting one of these pretty much whenever one dies. It's not guaranteed, but it'll certainly seem like that when you're fighting them. And if the game does go a bit longer before the bombardment come in, you're going to be inundated with those poxwalkers. And if you bunch up, Typhus is going to spew all over you. It's going to be tough, but not unbeatable. The Thousand Suns, possibly my pick of the bunch. If you get to dictate the battleground and you can place Abraxas exactly where you want to, to summon in all of his summons, you'll probably win the game then and there. The problem is they're not very tough. They will fall apart very easily. And if you lose Abraxas due to an overwatch shot, your game is pretty much over. They are also going to be a very strong contender for the best team to take into the faction TA. World Eaters. This is going to be a team which will be good if you get everything lined up properly. In your first turn, you'll be wanting the shield from Rask, so make sure you move him last. In your second turn, you're going to want to make sure that Azkor is in a position to buff Khan for when Khan uses any of his attacks to kill whoever he's attacking. Angrax is also there as a useful method to get rid of any overwatch shots. He's going to tank pretty much anything the enemy can throw at you. Will they be the best? They're going to have trouble up against the Death Guard, as I don't think they're going to do enough damage. But they probably will rip the Thousand Suns to shreds. And this is a good thing, because it's going to try and keep everything in balance. Will they be the top team? No. Will they be fun? Oh hell yeah. The Eldari is going to be one of those glass cannons. On paper, they're going to hit super hard. You've got the additional crit rate from Aethani, you've got the additional damage from Eldrian, and of course you've got Jane Zar being able to use her special ability to hit multiple opponents. Morgan Ra has got an increased crit rate. They're going to hit incredibly hard. And of course, Kalendis is, well, Kalendis. The problem will come in. If they survive, they're going to hit you back and you're not going to be able to weather the storm because they are Eldari and they don't have as much armor or health. In the Guild War, the Necrons are fantastic because of that additional health buff. Here you don't have that, they're not going to last long enough, they don't hit hard enough, let's move on. And now the Orcs. I think these guys are going to be underrated and I believe these guys are going to do amazingly. They're an Alpha Strike team but they've also got a lot of disruption. Before you attack anyone, you're going to announce the war with Golgorts and possibly charge in. However, against a Death Guard, you're probably going to want to charge in with Tank Smasher first to break apart the formation, and that will allow you to kill one or two of their key characters. But on that initial war charge, they're going to get an extra movement, they get extra attack, they get extra damage, and then once they're in combat, Snotflog is going to bring in his grots and they're going to taunt you. These guys are going to be scary. And the first time, you, you're probably all laughing at me going, what the heck am I smoking? Watch out, you've been warned here. These guys are going to do really well. And finally, the Tau. I think this is going to be a decent enough team. Ravas has had a kind of stealth nerf because of the improvement to Terminator armor. And of course, you can go into Overwatch twice using Orn She. Shosil is a great character, and Shadow Sun isn't too bad either, especially if you can move to get the high ground. They're not going to be top tier. If the enemy has a way of suppressing Ravas or being able to walk someone into that Overwatch without them dying, your team's going to fall apart. If you can get away with the Overwatch, you're going to do well. Are they the top? No, but they are going to be decent. Who am I going to use in this arena? I'm going to first of all try the Orcs, followed by the Thousand Suns, and I'll probably give Death Guard a go as well, but I don't think Death Guard really suit how I 
play the game. If I have to give a warning, I would certainly warn people to look out for the orcs. I think they're going to be better than people expect. And the Black Templar, I honestly believe they're going to take a lot of people by surprise. If you like these videos, then it would be much appreciated if you at least think about using my friend code, as it really does help me out. Or if you or your guilds are looking for a new home, please reach out to any of the guilds shown, as we'll always welcome new people into our midst. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and I'll be seeing you on the battlefield.